so I'm still a bit shaken up from what happened. I have no clue what I saw and I just want some answers. I guess I should explain. My family has managed to keep its hands on a good chunk of land out in the middle of Ochigo National Forest. It's a beautiful place down there, but it's got some problems. There's no cell service, no paved roads, and the closest person to us is miles away. Basically, if anything happens out there, you're screwed. Still, the escape from the world and the beauty there is absolutely incredible. I've been going since I was a kid with my dad, and everything was great. I remember sitting around the campfire and hearing coyotes all around us. Scared me a little, but I was comforted by it in a weird way. We usually were never disturbed. Most you'd see out there is a couple of ATVs, maybe a cougar, but that's it. But everything changed last weekend. My dad and I went down to the property to check on how things were holding up. We do this sort of thing all the time. You need to with a place like this. The place was turning a hundred, and it seems nature is trying to take it back. It's infested with rats, and termites are starting to eat it. It's sad to see the place I spent so much time as a kid be in a state like this, but I was doing something about it at least. On the drive there, I started noticing a few deer carcasses, fresh ones. It's nothing unusual around there, just mother nature taking its course. But something about it gave me a weird vibe. To make matters weirder, we found pretty big prints in the gravel around our place. My dad had been up there for years and he said he's never seen a print like that. We chalked it up to some hikers playing a joke or something. Nothing else major happened that day, but I had some great times with my dad that day. He's been having a rough time. He had a bad car crash last month, and he's had surgery after surgery to try and fix his back, with absolutely no results. He smiled for the first time in a long while, and I'm just glad I could be there for him. The next day, I noticed more deer carcasses, a lot more, and closer to the cabin. Poor things were absolutely mutilated. My dad, figuring it was some creep stalking us, tried firing some shots to scare whoever it was off. The gun was jammed though, so he gave it a rest. Later that night, my dad and I built up a nice little fire and started talking. It was fun but I noticed a sound. We both froze up right there. The sound of it. I'd been there for most of my life and I have never heard something like that. Imagine a woman screaming, mix it with a boar, and put it through the fires of hell. That's what that thing sounded like. We put out the fire and ran to our car, locking all the doors, I realized we left the gun out near the campfire, but my dad kept me from running out there. We ended up sleeping there that night, and after a few sleepless hours I finally passed out. The next day, there were more deer carcasses. It was different though. All the bodies were piled outside the cabin, like someone put them there, like they wanted us to see. What's worse, our gun had disappeared. We dragged off the corpses, trying to stay calm, and started working again. The day was long and hot, but we made some good work. I couldn't stop myself from thinking about the bodies, about the sound last night. I could tell that my dad was shaken up too, not that he would admit it. We decided to not light a fire that night in case whatever that sound was came back. The car was cramped, but I figured it was better than staying out with whatever that thing is. It had been a few hours. We had fallen asleep and everything was all right. Later that night though, I got woken up by a sound. I laid there for a few minutes, too scared to lift my head. 
All I could think of were those deer, that sound. I braced myself and sat up. That's when I locked eyes with the thing. It was probably eight or nine feet tall. And while the moon was bright that night, whatever it is soaked up the light with its pitch black fur. All I could see was its two milky white eyes and its smile. That smile, it was grinning ear to ear and it was staring straight at me. I couldn't look away as it slowly lifted its finger to its mouth. It slowly turned and strode off in steps way too long. I couldn't dare let myself move until I lost sight of that thing. We left that same night. Now I'm a reasonable person. I don't just see things and I know what I saw out there. I'm terrified to go out there again, but I need to know what's going on there. Okay, so I got a knock on my door and I found this note. What is going on here? Okay, so some of you noticed there was stuff on the back. So I tried to get a good shot of what was on it, but my phone died. I can tell you guys that it's a letter from the hospital about my dad's back surgery. The numbers people mentioned were scribbled all over the paper, and I couldn't tell what they meant. But I noticed there were GPS coordinates. It leads to some empty lot. I'm not sure if I should go there, but what do you guys think? I've also seen that you guys think this thing might be a skinwalker. I'll be heading to the cabin this Wednesday, so I'll be sure to bring a shaman with me. Okay, so before I get into what happened yesterday, I just wanted to talk about a few things. Firstly, I wanted to start off by thanking all of you for your advice. I'm honestly not sure if yesterday would have gone so well if it wasn't for the tips you guys gave me. Secondly, I've noticed some people driving by my house ever since I posted the first part of my story. I don't know if they're connected to what's been happening or if I'm just being paranoid. But either way, I'm freaked out. Finally, before I headed to the property, I decided to check on the empty lot I found through the note. I managed to only find a few empty spray cans and a pile of ashes. I'm sure I could have found more, but everything in my body was telling me that I need to get out of there. I might go back there at some point, but I can't promise anything. Anyways, my dad and I bought a new rifle and, as you guys recommended, some silver bullets. It was a pain to get, but I managed to buy some white oak oil from some dude on Craigslist. After I got everything together, I headed out early Wednesday morning for the cabin. The first stretch of road seemed to go on for miles and my mind couldn't help but wander as I drove onwards. Flashes of blood and fur crashed through my mind. That terrible roar still echoing in my ears. Stuff like that has been happening ever since I got back. Though it's far from the worst of my problems, I'll save it for my therapist to handle. By the time I reached the reservation, the sun was barely peeking over the dusty hills shining its golden light upon the land. I always loved driving through here, seeing the dusty hills and plateaus, watching golden drops of light dance on the surface of streams. Now though, it was different. A colder feeling draped over me as I pulled into the museum. If anyone knows what this thing is, it's these people. After a bit of scrounging around, I found someone there who knew what this thing might be. Their best guess was a skinwalker. And while unfortunately there wasn't anybody still around who knew how to deal with one, they gave me a small bundle of sage and wished me luck. The rest of my drive seemed to pass quickly and I only had one thought on my mind. The skinwalker is not going to see the light of day again. I was so enveloped in my rage and determination that I barely realized I was there. The moment I drove up to the gate, I knew something was wrong. It was only when I got up to the driveway that I knew what set me off. 
sprayed onto the side of the cabin was the symbol from the note. And when I got out to investigate, I found a thumb drive on the ground. That's when I started thinking, maybe this is bigger than some skinwalker. It's a problem I had to deal with later though. As I came out here again to do a job, I ended up smudging the property, all the while enjoying the scenery. The green grass, the towering trees, it's like something out of a dream. That's when I came along to the green castle. At least, that's what I used to call it. The green castle was this little cozy patch of brambles that I used to hang out in. Playing cards while surrounded on all sides by branches made me feel like I'd just discovered some new area. Some secluded grotto only I knew about. Nowadays, it just looked like a pile of sticks. I guess that's what adulthood does to you. I wandered over to the green castle and noticed something strange. Sitting on the stump I used as a table was this old book. I took a seat and flipped it open for a second, only to discover it was the journal of the guy who set this place up. I set it in my truck to look at later while I finished up smudging the place. After that came the preparation. I bathed my rifle in the smoke of sage almost feeling the pure energy pulse through the gun. The silver bullets dripped with white oak oil. As I loaded them in, one by one, the rifle almost seemed alive, like it seeked the blood of that thing, and I intended to feed it. It wasn't long after that when I heard the roar again, echoing through the trees like some foul call from places no man should walk. It was like it called to me, Taunting me, I ran to the sound. My heart in my throat as I bound through the underbrush. Then I saw it again. Its antlers could be seen clear as day, towering like the spires of a castle long abandoned. Its blank milky eyes stared right at me, and its smile was still plastered on its face. The damn thing was taunting me. It wanted to be shot. I didn't care about any of that, or anything at all. I wanted it dead. Bang. The forest grew silent, and the blood drained from my face. It still stood there, still staring. As it strode over to me, I continued to fire, hoping one of them would kill it. It stopped right in front of me, grabbed my gun effortlessly from my hands, and bent it like it was clay. I have never ran faster than that moment, my heart beating so hard I feared it would burst. As I raced for my truck I didn't dare look back, but I knew that whatever that thing is was right behind me. As I clambered into my truck and sped off, I could see the thing was in the rear view. It was waving. It's like this is all some game. So needless to say guys. I'm back at square one here. I'm at a loss you guys. I have absolutely no clue what to do. Maybe that old book or the thumb drive have some answers. I'll try to keep you guys updated on this. Okay, so I stuck the thumb drive into my laptop and I found this picture. There was absolutely nothing else in it. Alright, just read a few pages of the journal, and there were some interesting things in there. The guy was a miner who set up the cabin as a place to stay while mining for gold. There were a bunch of pages talking about how wet it was in the mines, and how disappointing the lack of gold was. But then he started talking about this cavern he found underground. He talked about this weird statue in the cave and how it gave him the chills. Apparently the next day it was gone. I have a feeling this stuff is linked. My name is Chills and if you're curious to see what I look like without all this darkness, then follow me on Instagram at DylanIsChillinYT and feel free to send me a DM if you have any questions or suggestions.
And I'd just like to say thank you to Mr. Toast98 for writing this story. The link to the original post is in the description. The following videos have been recorded live, making them much harder, if not impossible, to edit. Half of these people are just doing normal shows that have nothing to do with the spirit world until suddenly, a ghost shows up, seemingly out of nowhere.